Welcome to our lectern line. In the quest to understand the structure of the hydrogen atom better, in other words, the Bohr atom, we had to come up with some principles on which we could build. And the principles were the following four. First of all, they said that electrons must move in circle orbits obeying Coulomb's law. That was, of course, an absolute must because the electron is negatively charged and the proton is positively charged. So what provides the centripetal force of the orbit of the electron must be the attractive forces between them, which is defined by Coulomb's law. The next principle was that electrons must move in stable, quantized orbits. In other words, they did not radiate out any energy, so therefore the radius of the orbit must remain the same as they orbit around the nucleus. If they were radiating energy, then the electron would lose energy, therefore lose velocity, and therefore would spiral inwards to the nucleus. And it doesn't do that, it doesn't collide with the nucleus, so therefore it must stay in what we would call quantized or certain orbits without radiating energy. Next, they said that the electrons must exist in specific energy states and absorb and give off energy in quantized chunks. So they can only go from one transition or from one orbit to another orbit through transitional states or steps that were quantized and each time the energy absorbed or given off was equal to the difference between those energy states. And finally, they determined that the size of the orbit is constrained by the requirement that the angular momentum itself is also quantized, which was kind of an interesting, kind of a, a stretch when it comes to physics, because obviously we would think of angular momentum as being continuous and continually changing, but they said that when it comes to the atom, the angular momentum can only exist in energy steps of h bar, where h bar is equal to h divided by 2 pi. Of course, h is Planck's constant. Not only did we determine that the, that the angular momentum had to be in energy numbers of, of uh, h bar, so therefore in quantum states, we also determined that the length of the orbit also had to be in integer multiples, in this case, integer multiples of lambda. So the angular momentum was quantized and the orbital length or circumference or radius was quantized as well. In other words, since we now knew that electrons, small particles like electrons, behaved like waves, and therefore we can think of the electron going around the, orb around the uh, nucleus like this, like a wave particle, as it goes around the nucleus, it can only do so if there was constructive interference as the electron came back in, its, in the same position as before, so that it can only do that if it traveled an energy number of wavelengths. If it didn't travel an energy number of wavelengths, then the electron would essentially interfere with itself and it couldn't exist that way. So two prime, prime conditions that angle momentum was quantized in energy numbers of h bar and the circumference was quantized in energy number of wavelengths, where n of course is 1, 2, 3, and so forth. Now, if we take a look at these equations a little bit more, we know that the angle of momentum can be written as the moment of inertia times the angle of velocity. So that has to equal n times h bar. And for a point particle like an electron, the moment of inertia would be the mass times the radius squared, and omega can be written as v over r. And that should be a v, the velocity divided by the radius, equals n h bar. And so if we cancel this r with this r, we can then see that the requirement was that m r v, the mass of the electron, the radius of its orbit, times its velocity must equal the energy number of h bar. So that was one condition. The next condition we have from here, where the circumference of the orbit had to be equal to an energy number of wavelengths, we can say that the circumference, which is 2 pi r, had to be equal to n times lambda. So we can say that the radius, we can then write that radius is going to be equal to n times lambda divided by 2 pi. So here, if we knew the velocity, we can figure out the wavelength. If we know the wavelength, we can figure out the radius. Here again, if we know the velocity, we can figure out the radius. So now we end up with the conditions giving us an ability to find out how fast an electron was traveling and how big the radius of its orbit was based upon these principles. So in the next videos, we're going to show you how we use that information to come up with the actual size of the orbit and the size of the atom accordingly. And that's 
ಅದೇ ಇದೆ ಅದು 